Alright, hello everyone. Last year I began teaching the uh, Lajitati of Ashes of Venus, and now I'm going to begin teaching the Lajitati of Ashes of Mercury. Now, this, before we get into it too much, this is like, <clears throat> these Avashas are really, really vast and really profound. I can only spend so much time teaching these, so while I go into this, <clears throat> this is not going to be as elaborate and as thorough as I would like it to be. But I will, um, you know, I, I want a lot of people to be able to, learn, be able to learn about these things who can't afford to pay for the courses and for the more in-depth material. So, this is just um, going to be a series of free YouTube videos, um, at least free for now. I might end up charging for them later, but they will be uh, just a course for you guys to learn about how to <clears throat> understand the different conditions and avastas of Mercury. <clears throat> Now to begin with, <clears throat> an avashta. What is an avashta? Well, an avashta just means like a condition or a state or a state of being. So um, many of you have a yoga background. So in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna tells Arjuna to you know act from the yoga avashta, the state of yoga. You know what I mean? So uh, any kind of avashta is just a condition or a state. So there are there are actually a lot of different types of avashtas. So lajitadi avashtas are just one of the five main avashtas. I haven't even gone into other ones like the baladi avashtas, the jagardadi avashtas, the shayanadi avashtas, the deep tadi avashtas. We're focusing on just one of the five avashtas, okay? Um, and within that there are these other sets of we could say sub avastas perhaps okay now within this the avastas of the within the lajitadi avastas you can be you can have a planet in the garvita state which makes it proud garvita means proud proud of what you're doing that happens when a, the planet is in, either exalted or in its mula tricona sign so for mercury that would be when whenever it's in virgo and no other time Okay, so when a planet is delighted, it's in the sign of a friend, or it's got the aspect of a friend, or the conjunction of a friend, and that is a really uh, a good thing, and so you got to understand that these Lajitati Vashas, they can be good or bad, you know, so some of them are going to be showing what we would simply put bad karma, and some of them are going to be what we would consider to be desirable good karmas. So obviously the proud and the delighted state are good the Shobita or the agitated state is not that great because it's whenever the planet is conjunct the Sun or aspected by a, um, an enemy planet that is also a cruel planet so whenever um, Mercury is conjunct the Sun that happens in about one in three charts so you have that Avashta going on so we will talk about that a lot Shudita this is star that's another kind of difficult negative one and that's when the planet is aspected by an enemy or in an enemy sign Lajita is when a plant the planet is ashamed. Um, it's when it's in the fifth house conjunct Saturn, Sun, or Mars, or if it's in any house and conjunct Rahu or Ketu plus Saturn, Sun, or Mars. So whenever you see a, a bunch of planets conjunct together with Rahu or Ketu in a cruel planet, there's usually a shame of Ashta going on there. Um, okay, so these are the the main Lajitadi Vashtas and so then you can just think about what do you know about Mercury and understand that when Mercury is proud, well, we'll be proud of those things. When it's delighted, one will be delighted by those indications. Agitated, agitated. Starved, you know, feel a lack of that. Feel starved by those things and ashamed will feel ashamed by them things. So this is uh, just, I'm just trying to put it really, really simply and bluntly so you get the idea. Um, there's so much you can expand upon from this. You could spend your entire life just with a team of scientific researchers just analyzing just Mercury of Oshis. That would be a great one for scientists to do since Mercury rules research. You could be graphing this out, you could have labs, you could have, you could be investigating this in every area of life, social dynamics, 
politics, business, health, lifestyle. It's across the board. These avashas work in medical astrology. You know, um, when Mercury is starved by its enemy, the moon, that can, you know, that could create allergies or it could create a blood issue, you know, if it's in cancer, because that's a sign of the blood. You can just take these and apply them all over, but you have to understand the principles first. So, first off, Mercury can be like speech or communication or, you know, just like expressing what you want or making a request for something or asking, hey, can I do this? So when you're proud, you just do that easily. You talk with people, you express, you, you, you know, you, you have great communication skills. You feel proud of your communication skills, your um, oratorical prowess, we might say. When Mercury is delighted, well, you're not that good, but it's like when you're at a friend's house. You know, Mercury is in a friend's sign, so it's just like when you're at a friend's house. You don't have everything you want, but if you're thirsty, you go, hey, can I have some juice? And he'll let you have some juice or whatever. So that's, that's like um, the next best thing to being in your own sign. Then when um, the planet's agitated, okay, so Mercury can represent that communication. So when Mercury is agitated by the sun, one ha one feels like more pressure to, it's harder to just speak what they want to speak, speak their mind. They've had authorities or solar people tell them, no, it's this way, or they've had, um, you know, their father or some solar-like figure belittle them about their op opinions and what they're interested in and these mercurial things. So they've felt agitated and they have to work through that karma. Um, um, Shadita, starved. Um, when you're in an enemy sign, like uh, when you know Mercury is in the sign of the moon, it's enemy Cancer. It can feel starved. It can feel like Mercury can't communicate easily. There's all this emotional um, stuff interfering with Mercury's ability to be impersonal and rational. Um, then Lajita is the ashamed of Ashta. So like one could actually feel ashamed of the things they say or their opinions they communicate and all these things. And this is actually very interesting. Um, this is what made me want to do this Avash, this Mercury Avasta series because I was thinking about it for a while and uh, was talking with a friend of mine who had a really, really cool example of their Mercury being ashamed. I mean, not cool, like, but really just interesting and fascinating. Um, and so I can't wait to share that example with you guys, amongst many other examples. So, I will, ex I will share examples of all these things and go into this more in depth, but um, that's really the gist of it. So, um, you know, plug in, like, it's like math, like, understand Mercury as best you can, then plug in those indications to these things. And um, when you start to see examples and practice it is where it will really come, come true for you and start to come, you know, start to be something you really see. Okay, so... Um, I actually should back up. I wasn't fully clear about this. Um, so every the the Vashtas are kind of based on on those little tables you learn about the the planetary dignities and the friends and enemies and stuff. So before you learn your your Lajitati Vashtas, you really have to have to understand the something over there. Um, the planetary dignities. Um, there's some critter over there. Um, you, you have to understand the. Uh, the table, uh, you have to understand and just memorize what every planet is friends to and enemies to. And this, hopefully, by going through these videos, you will be in to memorize them. Um, so, Mercury is really unique because he only has one enemy and it's the moon. So, just understanding that tells you so much about Mercury because Mercury is about research and the earth element. He rules the earth element, how things really are concretely. The moon is the, the most subjective planet. It's more like how we feel about things inwardly. That's not always the way things really are externally. So when you see Mercury in Cancer or Mercury star by the moon, you can get people who deal with a lot of, um, like, they, they have, they're not the best researchers. If I'm just putting it, you know, not trying to say anything personal about anyone who might have this, but... Um, you actually find Mercury Moon um, involved in a lot of people who are involved in journalism and the media and, um, and, and, and are very vocal, you know, opinionated people. If that's like their career planets or if you have career planets connected with Mercury and Moon, you can be involved in the media and journalism, all this stuff and research. But what's fascinating is it's not always great because or well, you can kind of hopefully I can give examples, but the moon colors Mercury too much. 
the moon makes Mercury, it, it colors it with too much subjectivity. So it's hard for the person to be impersonal and just think like rationally and they just get like one opinion or one mindset and then just go about their life trying to find things that validate and prove that mindset. That's not real truth. That's not real healthy right Mercury, you might say. That's not the highest use of Mercury. Mercury um, is is just more about the 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 actual things as they are whether they are what I like or not it's more about just seeing how it really is um, so I hope that that kind of helps you guys understand a little bit about how moon and mercury can color things or, or you know what I mean it can kind of so one can um, it's, it's kind of like how these days with the internet you know you can like find anything to prove a point in one way or the other so uh, if I want to know if I really want to believe someone's research or stuff, I can sometimes look at their Mercury Moon situation and see, okay, are they really rational about all this, or is there some sort of emotional or personal thing that's an agenda behind them that's sort of skewing them and making them want to see everything from a certain angle? That's another possibility. Um, so, whenever Mercury is exalted or Mula Tricona, you have someone who is going to be proud of all these things, is going to be proud of their research, you know, is not going to be too subjective. They're going to be able to think rationally and be critical, but in a, um, in just a, in an objective way that doesn't have this agenda, you know, so that's great for scientific research and work. Um, Mudita is like the next best thing, like I said, so that's really good. Shobita, um, one can feel, you know, agitated for trying to, you know, for their interests and, you know, curiosity. So, so we look, we, every little thing you can think about, um, with Mercury and all, you can kind of start to plug into these things and get good insights. Um, I hope that helps, but I'll share examples in a moment, or actually I shouldn't say a moment in, um, whenever I can.